Hello chess fans, may I have your attention for the following absolutely insane game played in round two of the FIDE candidates. It's Jan Nepomnesi playing against Alireza Firusha. And remember, two years ago at the FIDE candidates tournament in Madrid, Jan Nepomnesi playing with the white pieces, a fantastic game to crush Alireza Firusha. And they always play very enterprising, interesting chess. Remember, for instance, Earlier this year in Tata Steel, when Alireza Firusha playing with the white pieces shocked the entire chess world with this move one knight c3. Everybody was laughing about it, including Jan de Pomnici. When he arrived at the board, he was like, what is happening here? Well, knight c3 was not played in this game today, but some absolutely brilliant things are happening. So if you would like to see this game, also make sure to subscribe to the channel. I will cover all the ins and outs. I'll do my best because... Frankly speaking, I also have some difficulties to understand what's, what's going on in, uh, in this game. Janne Pomnici played the move 1, e4. He's playing with the white pieces and Firusha goes for e5. Knight f3, knight c6, bishop to b5, knight f6. We have the Berlin defense. Don't worry, it gets very exciting very soon. d3, bishop c5, c3. Both sides are castling. And now, interesting moment because in another video I recorded... It's the game of Nakamura against Fidit, in which the Indian player played here the move d6. In this game, Firusha played more concrete way, with the move d5, challenging the pawn on e4. Now White can play it in a solid way with knight bd2, but Jan Nepomnici is looking for much sharper continuation. He captures on d5, Black takes back with the Queen, even setting up a little trap here with Bishop takes uh, f2 check. Winning the bishop on b5, therefore white secures the bishop on c4. This is nowadays a well-known theory. The bishop is looking great here on this diagonal. It kicks the queen back, it goes to d8. White plays the move b4, hits the bishop. The bishop goes back to e7. There are other options as well. But both players came very, very well prepared. Knight bd2. And the question is, how is black able to exert pressure against this pawn on d3? Something like bishop f5 looks very tempting. It's a possibility, of course. But first, a6 is played with the idea to go b5, trying to dislodge the bishop from the c4 square, after which the pawn on d3 can be taken. Therefore, white goes a4 to cover the b5 square. Bishop f5 now played, hitting the pawn on d3, together with the queen. Queen c2, defending the pawn one more time. And black goes here for the move knight d5. So the knight is heading for the f4 square. But white plays here the move knight e4. So the bishop on c1 also participates. As it controls the f4 square, now going there with your knight is certainly less attractive. But one of the drawbacks of um, white's last move is that now after bishop g4, this knight on uh, f3... It looks like it's in trouble because you don't really want to ruin your pawn structure by being obliged taking back with your pawn. And this is interesting. They have been played a few games in um, uh, with this exact position. But the move played by Napo is uh, very unusual. Has been played only once, but very important. Queen a2, really sharp move, so that together with the bishop, white is exerting pressure on this uh, light square diagonal towards the black king. Taking on f3 is not attractive because white is not going to take back, but instead will capture with a bishop on d5. And now white is ruling the light squares in the center. Things are looking very nice here for white with, uh, with a lot of pressure on, uh, on black's position. So therefore, instead of capturing on f3, it's better to first drop back with the knight to b6. Attacking this bishop and you don't want to give up your bishop. It's your best piece. So the bishop goes back to b3, but... What's happening here? Black captures on f3, destroys the pawn formation in front of the white king. White has to take back. And now the pawn on d3 can just be taken here. Black is a pawn up and even threatens here to take the pawn on uh, f3. White played therefore here the move king g2. And uh, looks like white is playing very slow and white has blundered when you look at the position at first. But don't worry, this is... Very deep opening preparation from the very highest level. Why does white have compensation here? It's all about this bishop on uh, b3. It's a monster. The knights on the queen side, they're out of play. 
And white is even threatening now to play the move rook d1 when the queen on d3 is trapped. So that means the queen got to go back. It went to d7. The rook goes to d1 anyway. It's the queen. And now the queen has to uh, to choose where, where it should go. I mean, queen f5 is, for me, the most logical move. But after move like that, white will get a lot of tempo moves. He can attack the queen, go after the queen with the knight, with the bishop. There is quite a lot of piece play while black's pieces on the queen side, they are still quite bad. White also has the bishop pair, of course. So instead of queen f5, queen e8 was played. This looks passive. On the other hand, the queen defends the pawn and uh, probably has also some other ideas. And now, for me, the, the first big shock of the game up to this point, this was still some sort of known theory. They were following a game uh, of two strong grandmasters, Dura Bailey and Rothstein, till a few moves earlier, and uh, this was the logical improvement. So this is something which has been studied very deeply by Napo and his uh, and his team of seconds. As he played here, this shocking idea h4. It's something I would probably not have come up with myself under any normal circumstances. It's a bizarre looking idea. Why do you place your pawn here? Well, don't worry. The pawn on h4 cannot be taken. It runs into rook h1 and white gets tremendous play along the h file. If you go back with the bishop, for instance, queen c2 and you're getting checkmated very soon. This pawn on h7 is in trouble. White is threatening knight f6 with a discovered check followed by queen takes h7 mate. If you play g6, queen d2 and you're also getting mated here. There's nothing black can do here. Black is busted. So you got to do something else. And the difficult thing is is that there are so many different options for black here to consider. For instance, you can put your rook on the d file, try to swap some rooks. You can consider a move like king h8. It's a move I like to try to prepare f5. But also the move knight c8, played by Firusha, certainly comes into consideration. I, In a way, I really like it. It may seem a bit slow, but the knight was not doing anything on b6. And it is now heading for the d6 square, where it's more centrally placed. How should white continue here? That is the big question. What is the, the main task of your h-pawn? Well, in the game, Napo went for the move h5, but I, I would like also to make a case for something like queen c2, when the plan is to make use of the g5 square. Uh, you can go there with your knight, and in, if it gets exchanged by the bishop, you can take back with your h-pawn, and the rook may, may even come over to the, uh, to the h-file. There's definitely some play, but it's incredibly complex. Napo had a, a different idea. He wanted to advance his h-pawn, to open up the king side in this way, trying to provoke new weaknesses. And black, of course, can consider something like h6 to, to stop the march of the h-pawn. And I have absolutely no idea what is going on here. Maybe white is considering playing something like f4 to get rid of the double pawns. You're a pawn down, but you have a lot of piece play with your bishop pair, the major pieces, and, and so on. So definitely interesting stuff. But in the game... Firusha played here the move king h8. So his idea is to play very soon the move f5. And that's why the king should be on h8. Otherwise, it would be standing in the line of the bishop. White continues with h6. And now, very, very strong move by Firusha as he played the move g5. Fantastic response. You're just taking over the initiative on the king side with the point being that if you do take that pawn... Then there's rook g8 and your knight is pinned. Black wins the piece. What should Y do? Well, maybe get a rook over to g1, looking for ways to get the rook involved in the game. Queen d2 was, uh, was played. So it also hits the pawn on, uh, on g5, but you're not really going to take. There's always this problem on the g-file. So what is the point of queen d2? You're looking for the opportunity to enter with your queen on d7, and you wouldn't mind the exchange of uh, queens, as we will see in a second. First, black has a number of options. You can still consider something like f5, which is an incredibly sharp and interesting move, but was not played in the game. The reason is that white can capture on uh, g5, and there's not rook g8 possible because the bishop is guarding that square, but after something like f4, you're disconnecting the queen, from the support of the knight and very soon black may be able to take over the initiative on the g-file. Still very complicated. I have no idea what's going on. So black instead played knight d6. So that was one of the main ideas of getting your knight from b6 to the center. 
The D file is closed. White played the move bishop b2. So you're looking for opportunities on this uh, long diagonal. And how should black cope with it? Well, I know one thing for sure, but I'm not like a, a calculator like these two guys. I see a problem, potential problem, and I'm thinking here, okay, I don't want this bishop to hit my king on this diagonal. So I would have gone for f6 just to set up some sort of blockade on this diagonal and at least your king is safe for now. I mean, drawback, of course, is that the rook can still not come to the g-file. The bishop, the lie squares are, are, are really vulnerable. So, okay, f6, I think... Black is okay, he's a pawn up after all, and white got to prove its compensation. But Firusha played knight f5. He is playing one more time with that knight, but it does allow the move queen d7. The queen enters on the seventh rank. And if you do exchange queens, well, black is still a pawn up, but white is incredibly active with a lot of play against all white against all black's uh, weaknesses. So this is something you shouldn't really want to play as um, as black. What should you do instead? Pawn on h6 can be eliminated, but then probably knight g3, and this knight on h6 is also stranded, doesn't have a good square to go, and uh, there's a lot of positional compensation when you're controlling the f5 square, you have ideas to take on c7 next. Well, very tough stuff, but I imagine that Firusha was looking for its own chances. Played here the move knight h4 check, hitting the king. The king goes to the safest place on the board, king f1, and black could have considered taking on f3, but first play the move f5 to hit the knight on e4. The knight goes back to g3, and now black captures the second pawn on f3. Is black just winning here? No, I have no idea what is going on here, guys. It's super, super complex, and although you're two pawns up, I also know that your king doesn't have that many... Uh, that, that much of a, of a shelter from the support from its own uh, pawns. It's very, very tricky here now. And uh, taking the pawn on f5 is of course not possible. Queens will be swapped and the knight on f5 will be taken. So white has to look for other ideas to generate play. b5 is played here to uh, to attack the knight on, um, on c6. And... Um, well, uh, you may take on, on b5, but after the exchange uh, of rooks on a1, I think there are still quite a number of, uh, of problems. You you don't really want to take on d7 because then your pieces are, are hanging. And if you go away with your knight, well, then probably queens are getting exchanged and then knight takes f5. White is still having a great time here. Despite the queens being exchanged, I uh, think black is in huge trouble. So... That was one idea, but Firusha is ignoring the threat. He played here this move f4, attacking the knight on g3, and Napo played it safe. He could still have considered trading of queens first. That's probably the safest way of playing, but he decided to keep the tension. Usually the side with the initiative, it really helps to not to go for these exchanges. So why played here knight e4? And here we arrive at one of the critical moments in the game, because the knight is on a fantastic square. But what should black do here? And, well, in the game, Firusha moved his knight away to a5. Very logical move. Moving away uh, your, your knight, which is under threat, and you hit the bishop on, uh, on b3. But here, with also the white king being very exposed, queen h5 is apparently leading to a draw by force. To be honest, I still don't understand what I'm going to show you. So please forgive me if I not explain it well. But let me show you this line. There's b takes c6, capturing the piece. Then it's knight h2. If king goes to e1, there is knight f3 back and it's a repetition of moves. King e2, knight e4 with double check makes things even much worse. So after knight h2, king can go to g1. You go back to f3, the repetition is in the air. One way to try to avoid this repetition is king g2, knight h4 check, and then the king goes to f1. Now, all of a sudden, the checks are over, but there is this incredible, insane idea to play the move knight f5. And what is the idea? You defend the bishop, first of all, but most importantly, you're threatening now queen h1, followed by queen takes e4, winning the piece back. And, well, white should therefore play the only move bishop d5, and I'm unable to explain. I know that the engine says that it's 0.00, .00 and black can uh, can take on c6. Everything is hanging. 
White got to keep the, the knight defended. Maybe there are ideas with uh, rook b8 to hit the bishop. Maybe rook a d8. Anything is possible. But it's it's super complex. And therefore, I don't want to blame Firusha for not playing the, the su uh, computer suggestion. Because I think most people would have gone for something like knight a5 instead. Now, bishop is under threat. The bishop has different squares to go to. It can go back safe to, to a6. Uh, to a2, pardon me, if it's on a2, then you keep the diagonal for the queen open, but the bishop went to e6. Looks like a very nice multi-purpose move, but still, things are incredibly difficult here. I mean, white looks like everything is under control, but with something like g4, who on earth can explain this to me? One idea is that if you do take on g4, it's knight h2, and you can take on, uh, on g4, and, uh, well, the king is also... In, uh, in some sort of trouble. But White will play instead something like c4 with the idea to open up the diagonal for the bishop. And then later there are ideas to take on g4 because if you do then move the knight away, the, this bishop on, um, on b2 is incredibly strong with ideas to take on e5 with check. Apparently the best move would be now to go knight b3 with ideas to take on a1 or even neutralize this diagonal by... Uh, uh, interfering on uh, on d4. Guys, let's go back to the game. I don't understand it at all. So let's see what happened. Here, Firusha had a different idea, but not a good one. He played queen g6. He is attacking the knight on e4. But after queen takes e7, that knight can just not be taken because of checkmate on g7. That's the main point of Harry the H-pawn. It's supporting the mating uh, threat on g7. So that is not possible. And what what is it that, that Firuja missed? Was he planning here to play something like rook a e8 with the idea that if the queen moves away, then you take on e6? Well, there's queen g7. Check. And uh, black doesn't get a chance to take uh, the bishop on e6 because you capture on g7 and white emerges with an, uh, with an extra piece. So that is also game over. Firuja played queen takes h6. So there are still these ideas with... Rook a e8, there are some coordination problems, and maybe this is something what Firusha had been hoping for. But now, very good move by Napo. He played bishop f7 to prevent rook a e8. Bishop is fantastically placed here. And if you do play queen g7 to pin this bishop, bishop can't go away, the queen will be hanging. There's rook d7, and white is having everything under control on the seventh rank. Black is unable to generate new threats. So Firusha played instead. Queen h3 check. King goes to e2. Then it's queen f5 with a double attack on the two minor pieces. The bishop and the knight. So the bishop goes back to defend the knight. And the bishop is doing okay here. Everything is still well protected. Because if you do play c6 with the aim of deflecting this bishop, there is this shot with knight d6 attacking the queen. Knight f7 will come white is winning. And another problem is that something like rook f e8 to attack the queen is met by queen f6. White is forcing the exchange of queens. So, therefore, rook a e8 is played. Now the queen cannot come to f6, but white can simply capture the pawn on c7. The queen is okay, white is a piece up, and there are no checks. But black is continuing the fight here with queen g4, setting up a discovered attack against the king. So knight e4, double check, is the main idea. But look at this. The king goes to d3. White is not afraid. No fear at all. The king is absolutely safe here. Black goes for the move. Rook d8. Pinning the um, bishop on d5. But there is this move c4. Defending the bishop. And opening up the bishop. The diagonal for the bishop on b2. And, well, there, there are some issues. If you, if you play something like queen h3 with new attacking ideas against the king, the king can hide on c2. So here, Firusha came up with another idea to keep the game alive with a rook sacrifice. Rook takes d5, eliminating the bishop first. c takes d5 and now queen h3 with a big difference that the c file has been opened. King c2 is no longer a good move because it will be met by rook c8 winning the queen on c7. What should white do then instead? Well, I want to take on e5 with the bishop so that if the king goes to um, uh, to uh, to g8, it will be checkmate on g7 with the queen. But the problem is 
knight takes e5 and you can't take on uh, on e5 with your queen because it's double check so look at this how are you going to make sure your king is safe napo shows the way knight g3 giving back material you are a rook up so don't be afraid giving back your um, your knight if you do take it then bishop takes e5 is possible brilliant shot and if you take on e5 you take with the queen king g8 you take the pawn on g5 king goes back queen e5 check again king g8 you take on g3 and you say i'm going to win this end game with an extra exchange and a passed pawn game over so knight g3 brilliant solution threatening bishop takes e5 now black came up with another insane move i don't know what Firusha had been eating before the game but i didn't see any of his moves coming knight c4 probably with the idea that if you take with the king it's rook c8 again so he is uh, attacking the bishop on b2 but you can simply take with the queen now you take on uh, on g3 so white can no longer take on e5 because the queen is no longer on c7 defending um, um, the bishop then if it captures but after f takes g3 everything is just under control Pawn takes b5 played, pawn takes b5, rook to c8 is played, attacking the queen, but it's not gonna, go, not gonna help, you can even move the queen to, uh, to e4, but I like even better rook h1 counter-attacking the queen on h3. If you do take on c4, white captures on h3 and white is just a full rook up. If you play queen f5 with check. If the king goes away, the queen is hanging. But of course, Napo had seen there's queen e4. And at the end of the day, white is still a rook up. So queen goes back to d7. Queen is under threat. Queen just centralizes. Very good move, guys. If you take the pawn with check, only good check in the position, then it's king e3 and the king is safe, ready to take the knight. And if you play queen b3, then it's queen d3, stopping the check. And the queen can't really go away, otherwise... The knight will be taken, or there's even a mating threat on h7. So black is completely lost. Played here king g8. With the idea that if you take the knight on f3, don't be too greedy. Your rook and the bishop up now, but there's queen takes b5, but there are so many checks. And black is okay, you shouldn't really allow that. Much better is to play it safe, enjoy your extra rook. That should be enough to win the game. King e3, no more checks. The knight went back to d4. And here, white simply captured on d4, eliminating another attacker. And black resigned. E takes d4. You can play anything. You can even capture the pawn on d4. But why not? Just to keep it simple with something like king d2. When black no longer has any good check, white is a rook up and will have no problems converting it. So this is, like two years ago, a very important victory for Jan Nepomnici in the candidates against Ali Reza Firusha. Ali Reza! took a lot of risks in this game and that's probably not how you can play against the world world's best players it's the way how Jan Nepomnici managed to qualify for his previous two world championship matches against Magnus Carlsen and Ding Liren he was exploiting the mistakes by his opponents calculating incredibly well so also Jan Nepomnici in 2024 is off to a very good start on one and a half out of two and that means that he's in the shared lead with Gukesh with Caruana and also with which guy I'm forgetting guys oh my god I forgot which guy is also winning his game today it was also a very sharp game I covered it on the channel let me just briefly check it because I feel ashamed feed it of course feed it won his game with the black pieces against Hikaru Nakamura so please forgive me for that small uh small mistake from my side anyway I hope you enjoy the coverage on this channel so far all the games of round two in the candidates are covered on my channel. Please check it out and also make sure to come back for the upcoming rounds. See you then. Bye bye.